Hi, this is Phil Simon from the Huffington Post, and I'm very pleased today to be joined by Steve Rothery, who's the guitarist and founding member of one of my very favorite bands, Marillion. Steve, how are you doing today? I'm good, Phil. How's things there? Good, good. Before we talk about your exciting new project, can we get the obligatory Marillion update out of the way? Uh, yeah, we just finished a short European tour, um, the last bit of promotion for our last studio album, Sounds of Copy Made. Uh, we're kind of going to be doing a bit of writing and a bit of rehearsing uh, next few months. Then uh, Pete, Pete Rowe, Mr. Bass, plays off with Transatlantic for a couple of months touring. Um, we then do the Yes Cruise at the beginning of April, uh, which we're all kind of looking forward to. Um, another South American tour in May. Um, maybe some other shows in the summer we haven't heard. But uh, while, while Pete's away, I'm, I'm going to concentrate on the solo album. Great. Well, let's talk a little bit about it because it's been something you've been thinking about now for a few years. Yeah, I first uh, talked to our record company at the time, EMI, about it back in 1985. So uh, it almost happened then. It almost happened again in about 92 when um, IRS, our, our record label at the time, approached me to do an album for their No Speed label. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that kind of... I didn't. I decided not to do that in the end, and that's kind of became when I did my first wishing tree out of my other project. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of all instrumental, um, progressive uh, rock. And it's quite sort of cinematic as well. It's not. It's not uh, just a kind of a, a, a prog record. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's coming together. It's, it's called the Ghosts of Pripyat. Um, it's being financed through Kickstarter. Uh, we launched the Kickstarter um, official com campaign yesterday, actually on my birthday, with a, with a target of £15,000 uh, over 60 days. And we reached that within 24 hours. So uh, an amazing result and uh, a lot of excitement, really. We, I got the idea because I, I did a, a guitar festival in Bulgaria um, last month, which I had to write a lot of music for. Um, and it turned out so well that I thought I should, I should make an album out of it. Mm -hmm. So um, talk a little bit about why Kickstarter, because crowdfunding sites have really taken off and different musicians have used different sites like Kickstarter, like Pledge Music. Was there something specific about Kickstarter? Um, I think for me, it's, it's, it's the most sort of, I don't know if it's a high profile or, or if it's just the way that it runs seems very well organized, maybe compared to studio, but some of the other crowdfunding, um, obviously, you know, we kind of go right back with crowdfunding all the way back to sort of 97 with one of the first people to uh, use it as a concept. Um, but yeah, I, I was kind of been impressed with, with how Kickstarter operates. Um, and it's so far, it's working really well. Mm -hmm. Now, the album and what you're writing about actually has some historical significance. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the title track, uh, which is probably the only idea that's not really written yet, um, but I have one section for it which um, took me down this particular path. It's, it's, it's a, a piece of music that sounds a bit like a haunted children's fairground. Um, and I looked, looked on, online for inspiration for, for images that this could kind of work with, and I found this abandoned fairground in Belgium, first of all, that was, was quite interesting. Uh, and then I, I came across the um, the fairground in Pripyat in, in Ukraine, in, where the Chernobyl disaster was, which was actually built um, and it was due to open, I think, a week after the the, uh, the disaster there. Uh, and then, so I thought, yeah, the ghost of Pripyat, I thought that, 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 that could be um, quite an evocative title. Um, but as I kind of looked into it, um, it, it, it seemed to make makes sense for a lot of other reasons. I mean, what the ghosts could be. Um, when, when this happened, uh, they sent in 800,000 uh, engineers and, and firemen um, and soldiers to try and clear up the contamination from, from the disaster and strip thousands of kilometers of, 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 of uh, land off its topsoil, deforested the, the, uh, the woods, etc. And you know, twenty five thousand of those died from straight away from radiation sickness, and I think many more of them became ill. Um, so you know, it, it, it's, I think a, a, lot, a lot of the aspects of, of that as a disaster don't really get talked about. So I thought it, it was kind of good to bring that back into the public kind of eye, really, especially with what's happened with Japan with the with the accident there as well. 
Um, but yeah, hopefully I'm doing a benefit concert over in the Ukraine um, for those same people. These, these uh, they were called the liquidators, um, the, the, the people that were sent in to basically to try and clear up some of the mess. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be joined uh, when you record the album by some pretty prominent musicians. Can you talk a little bit about them? Yeah, uh, my good friend Steve Hackett's joining me in a couple of songs, uh, a track called Morpheus and a track called The Old Man of the Sea. Um, really looking forward to that. Um, hopefully some of my other friends as well. I've been talking to Steve Wilson about the possibility of, uh, of him being involved. Oh, of Porcupine Tree and now his own solo. Yeah, yeah okay. I mean, you know, maybe to mix, maybe to do some other stuff. I don't know. It, it might happen, it might not happen. It seems like he too. mixes and remasters everything these days. Yeah, Steve is the custodian of Paul, really. I, I don't and think he ever sleeps. Friend. Yeah, he's a good friend of mine as well. So, you know, it, like I say it might happen, it might not. But mm. uh, I think it'd be fantastic. What I'd really love is to have the three of us on a track. Um, mm. So we all sort of take it in turns to do something. I think that, that could be really cool. I'll just, I, I, I'll, I'm seeing him in a few weeks. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try and convince him. <laughs> Well, great. Well, congratulations. The Kickstarter project has already been very successful, but as you know, there's no real limit. Exactly, yeah. It's still got 56 days to go, so who knows where it will, where it will finish up. Uh, uh, but it, it's a very exciting time. Uh, I've done various other projects over the years, but uh, nothing with this kind of level of profile. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. Well, best of luck with it, Steve. Cheers, thanks. Okay.